Um, so all of my hours get put together with the money. So $30 per hour for the day. And I said that I was going to use D for day. So 30 hours during the day, $30 per hour during the day, plus my $10.50 per hour during the night, I'm gonna pay a total of $411. That's how we make our first equation, okay? There is still one more number left over in my problem, 28 hours of use. Okay, so that means that's my total hours. Well, I can't make an equation with just one number. So let's think about it. If that's my total hours, my total hours is gonna equal 28. Well, what kind of hours do we have? We have daytime hours and we have nighttime hours, right? So this is gonna represent D plus N. So all of my hours put together. So total hours of use Daytime and nighttime together gives me the 28 hours total. All right, that's how we set up the equation. From here, you can choose to solve by elimination or substitution. Um, and I'll even let y'all tell me how you want me to do it. You can like tell me in the chat. Okay, I'm doing substitution, elimination, substitution. Okay, more of you want substitution, I will do it that way. It's interesting because it's not what I would go for. If I had my choice, I would go right into whew, elimination. Okay. So I'm going to write down my equations on this so that way I can give myself more room to show you. Um, so also tell me in the chat, what variable do you want me to get by itself? You want me to get the daytime or the nighttime? Nighttime? Okay. Okay. So are we cool? I'm going to take the second equation and solve for N, and I'm going to do that by subtracting D to the other side. Okay, so when I solve for the N for my night, I get 28 minus D. So I'm gonna take 28 minus D, and I'm gonna plug it in for the N right here. And that's what I'm gonna show you on the screen. Just so I can have more room. Don't know why that's there. Okay, ready? So I'm gonna do 30D plus 1050 times 28 minus D equals 411. Because we solved for N, so when I get N, I'm gonna stop and substitute it for what I got it for, 28 minus D equals 411. Okay, now we need to solve, I'm gonna distribute here, so 1050 times 28. All right, this is gonna to simplify to 30D plus 294 minus 1050D equals 411. All right, so I took my 1050, multiplied it by 28, and multiplied it by negative D. <clears throat> I'm gonna combine like terms with my Ds. So 30 minus 1050, that gives me 1950D plus 294 equals 411. I need to make my writings or my typing smaller. Okay, 
Um, let's subtract 294. So 411 minus 294, move it over to the other side. I'm gonna continue over here. That gives me 1950D is now equal to 117. And then we're gonna divide that by the 1950. And I get D is equal to six. Okay. That's not my complete answer. That's just half of my answer, right? That's my daytime rate. So daytime rate is gonna be $6 each hour for the daytime. So what can I do to get the nighttime rate? Good. There you go. Yeah. Does it matter where we plug it in? Like which equation that we use from here? It doesn't matter which one, okay? It does not matter. I'm actually gonna use this one because I want night. So I'm just gonna do 28 minus six. Make that a little bit easier for me. I'm gonna do a little bit more. Since I know what D is, so night is going to be 28 minus 6. So my nighttime rate is going to be, nighttime rate is going to be $22 an hour. See that? So nighttime is $22 each hour. So if I would have plugged in my D of six into any of these original equations, I still would have gotten N equals 22. So again, it doesn't matter which one you plug it back into. All right. Questions on that one? Okay. Can you go back? Was that too quick? We're okay. 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 Our next one is about uh, coins and quarters. So we have Becca here. She's collecting money for the Red Cross. Okay. She collected ten dollars and fifty-five cents in donations for the Red Cross. She did it in quarters and in dimes. In all, there were seventy-four coins. How many of each type of coin did Becca have? Okay. Well, let's see here once again. Uh, we have money happening, right? We have $10.55 total in money. Um, and then I also know my total coins, my total coins, there we go, were 74. Now, how are we going to make two equations, two different equations, one all about the money and one all about the coins, okay? Well, let's make our variables, okay? The two different things we're talking about are quarters and dimes, right? So let's make um, let's make x equal quarters, and let's make y equal dimes. Something else we know about quarters and dimes is we know how much they're worth, don't we? So I know the worth that goes behind quarters. I know the worth that goes behind dimes. So therefore, I can make my two equations from this. Let's start with my total coins, okay? I have 74 total coins. So that means all of my quarters plus all of my dimes is going to equal a total of 74 coins in total, okay? When it comes to money, well, how much is a quarter worth? 25 cents, right? So 25 cents for each of those quarters plus 10 cents for each of those dimes is gonna give me a total of $10 and 55 cents. Okay, so the coins all together and then the money all together. Make sure your measurement that you're using 
is constant throughout the equation you're making. I couldn't put 74 and 10 to 55 in the same equation because they're talking about two different things. So I couldn't put those together. All right. Um, I'm going to use um, elimination with this one just because I just did substitution. I want to kind of balance it out. So I am going to do elimination with this one. So with elimination, let's remind ourselves, we have to be able to squish our equations together, eliminating one of them. The way we eliminate is if when we add them together, we have a positive and negative of the same thing. Because like two minus two will squish and give me zero, right? Um, negative 12 plus 12 will squish and give me zero. So in this equation, we need to make that happen. So what I'm going to do here, I'll let you pick. You want me to eliminate the X or eliminate the Y? We can really do either one of them. All right, Alex says Y. We're going to eliminate the Y. So notice I have a positive one Y, right? And positive point 10 Y. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply this entire top equation. I'm gonna multiply all of this by negative point 10. Okay, so everything is gonna get multiplied by negative point 10, everything, okay? So I have negative point 10 X minus point 10 Y equals negative 7.4. Okay, so everything multiplied by negative point 10. Uh, my bottom equation did not change. That's going to stay positive 0.25x plus 0.10y equals 10.55. All right. My, uh, my y's do eliminate because negative 0.10 plus 0.10 is going to give me zero. I'm going to change my color. Okay. So those do cancel out, which is what I wanted to do. So when I squish together negative 0.10, um, and positive 0.25, I'm going to get positive 0.15x. My y's are gone. And then negative 7.4 plus 10.55, because it was a positive, gives me 3.15. Okay. Finally, to figure out how many quarters we have, we're going to divide $3.15 by 15, and we get 21. All right, so I know that I have 21 quarters total. Okay, how do we figure out dimes? Go plug it in. Does it matter where we plug it in? Oh, good. Okay. So I'm going to pick the top one. Sound, is that okay? I know X. I'm going to do X plus Y equals 74. I know X is now 21. So 21 plus Y equals 74. Subtract my 21 over. We're going to get Y equals what? 53. So Becca collected 21 quarters and 53 dimes. <clears throat> Questions about either one of those before I kind of take it up a notch. Okay. So the next one you kind of see as a joke a lot when people talk. Uh, yes, Lauren, I agree. I love elimination, but some people prefer substitution. You got to show me both on the quiz today, but when it comes to word problems, I don't care how you do it. So it is dealer's choice when it comes to solving the word problems. You can do them both elimination if you want to. Yeah. Okay, so this one is kind of a joke that people talk about when it comes to like speed of trains and planes and cars, it's always some kind of 
people make fun of us for doing, um, but we're gonna do it. And now you can actually be able to like tell those people how to do it. <clears throat> people make fun of it because they don't understand it. That's usually what people, when they make fun of anything in their life, it's because they don't understand it. Um, so whatever, we're gonna help them out. So we're just gonna help people understand. So here we go, we have a plane, okay? Uh, with a tailwind, Zoli's plane traveled 840 miles in three hours, okay? With the same wind as a headwind, the return trip took Zoli 30 minutes longer, okay? Find the airspeed and the wind speed of the plane. So first, let's figure out the two different variables it's talking about. We have airspeed or like the plane. Okay, so this is gonna be speed of plane. Let's do X. No, don't give the answer away. X is gonna be the plane speed. And then Y is gonna be the wind. Okay, those are the two things we're figuring out. I promise you have one of these on your quiz today. I promise it's there, okay? So you have plane, you have wind, okay? When we have the wind helping the plane, wind with plane, oh my gosh, I can't write. Try this again. Here we go. We have the plane with wind, and we're going to have plane without wind. What's nice is this is how these are always set up. Always, you always have plane plus wind and plane minus wind every time, every single time you set it up just like this, okay? What goes next to it are my speeds, okay? When we drive a car, my speed is what? Miles per hour, right? That's what the, the numbers that they've given us are gonna help us figure out the speed, okay? So if we have miles over hours, okay? Um, let's see here, 840 miles, right, in three hours, and then we also have 840 miles, because that was the same distance, 30 minutes more, so that's what, three and a half hours? Like that? Okay. We're gonna actually find the speeds of the planes. So 840 divided by three hours means that it traveled 280 miles an hour. And then 840 divided by 3.5 gives me 240 miles per hour. Okay, that is what we're going to make our equations equal to, either 280 or 240, okay? Now let's think about it. With wind, it helps us go faster, right? So this is my faster time. So with my wind, we went 280 miles an hour. Without the wind, we went 240 miles an hour. So the wind helps the plane. Okay, this is how we always set it up. Plus wind, minus wind, find the two different speeds. Faster speed goes with the wind, slower speed is without the wind. 3.5 came from, it said that it took it 30 minutes longer. Oh, my eraser. There we go. Um, da, 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 da. the return trip took 30 minutes longer. So three hours and 30 minutes, we put it as 3.5. Always change it to a decimal. Yeah, always change it to a decimal. Okay. And then from here, now we solve. So the hardest part here really is figuring out the speeds. Speed with wind, speed without wind. Now we solve. Okay. Whether you like substitution or elimination, one of them is kind of like throwing themselves in your face, isn't it? Which one do you think we should probably use? 
Uh huh. Yes. Definitely elimination. Okay. Because look how it's already set up. You're, you already have a positive y and negative y. And again, I know I've said it a million times. I'm going to say it a million more times. It's always set up like this x plus y, x minus y. It's always set up and ready to go to be in an elimination problem. Okay. So when I bring these pieces together, when I bring x and x together, now I have 2x. y minus y, gone. 280 plus 240 um, gives me what? 520? Now we divide 520 by 2. We get 260. So x is 260. Then we plug that back in to whichever one you want to do. Doesn't matter which one. Um, I'm going to do the top one. So 260 plus y gives me 280. Subtract the 260 over, I get y equals 20. Okay. So think about it. We're doing plane speed and wind speed. Does it make sense that a plane speed is 260 miles an hour? Yes, that makes sense. Okay. Does it make sense that the wind speed is only 20 miles an hour? Yes, that makes sense. If it's backwards, that does not make sense. If you tell me the plane was going 20 miles an hour, it's not off the ground. It's still rolling on the floor. Okay. If there is a wind speed of 260, that's the worst tornado that's ever existed. Okay. Make sure your answers make sense. It does not make sense to put those the other, the other direction. Okay. So the plane, my plane is traveling 260 miles an hour and my wind is 20 miles an hour. Okay. Please make sure your answers make sense. Because it matters. In the quiz today, it's still in the blanks. So if you plugged in a 20 for where the plane should be and a 260 for where the wind should be, you're going to get it wrong. Make sure you plug it into the right, you fill it into the right spaces, okay? Because that wouldn't make sense. <clears throat> Question about the plane. Would you like to do another plane? This one has a plane. What's this one? That's another plane. Okay. Yes, we're doing a plane, kids. Let's go back to this one. Let's do this one. All right. Uh, with a headwind, a plane traveled 840 miles northward in two hours. Um, with the same wind as a tailwind, the return trip southward took one hour and 45 minutes. Find the plane speed and the wind speed. All right, here we go, doing it again. We always head it up, plane with the wind, plane without the wind. And again, if you are wanting to use letters that make sense to the problem, like if you don't wanna use X and Y, let's say you wanna actually use plane plus wind, Plane minus wind is the same thing. I really don't care. Okay. What we got to do is find my two different speeds, right? So we calculate speed doing miles over hours. Okay, so let's see here. We did 840 miles. So it's important that they tell us that they take the same trip because then you know that the distance was the same. So my mileage each time is 840. Okay, let's see here. Northward, two hours is one of my hours. The other one, one hour and 45 minutes. So remember, we have to convert that into decimals. So what's 45 minutes into an hour? That's what, 0.75? Make sure you convert into decimals, okay? 45 minutes out of the 60 minutes converts to 0.75. So make sure you do convert your time, okay? That's very, very important right here. You don't do it, you might, you will mess up. If you try to put 1.14, that's wrong. That's not, that is not the same thing. Okay, 
Okay, 840 divided by two. It gives me 420 miles an hour. And then 840 divided by 1.75 gives me 480 miles an hour. All right. <clears throat> So we put my fastest speed with my wind. So which one is that, the 480? Yep, so 480 goes with my wind. 420 is without the help of the wind. The wind kind of helps push the plane along. All right, and once again, I'm gonna do elimination. My W's cancel out, P and P, Squished with P, we're going to add those together. We get 2P. 480 plus 420 is 900. Divide both sides by 2. We get the plane speed of 450 miles an hour. Jeez, that's a fast plane. To get the wind speed, plug it back in to any of the original equations. Let me do this blue. Um, so 450 plus the wind gives me 480. So my wind is 30 miles an hour. Okay, so again, make sure our answers make sense. Because if I say that my wind speed was 450 miles an hour, I don't think you're on planet Earth anymore. I don't know where you are. You're not here. That's not happening. All right. So I've done four of them. I can do more if you think you need more. Um, what I can do, I will let me let me take attendance because some of you might want to stay and some of you might want to go and just work on your own. Let me do attendance. And people who want to stay and just do some more examples from the worksheet, um, I will do more with you. But if you feel like you're ready to do them on your own, do them on your own. Do the worksheet first. And then remember, you have the pop quiz today. Woohoo! Um, you have until midnight to get it done. When you start it, though, you only have 45 minutes to complete it. Okay? 45 minutes. I might be nice and make it like 50. Maybe. Let's see, it's 10 problems, five minutes per problem. That should be plenty of time. Yeah, I'll be okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll do 50 minutes. Okay. All right, so seriously, when you start the quiz, it will close. It will stop at 50, after 50 minutes. So use your time wisely. Have your paper out ready to... Um, show your work and ready to take pictures of it and upload them because that's part of it. That's why I'm going to kind of give you some extra extra time because I know you have to upload stuff. All right. Here. Quiz has a time limit. Okay, here we go. Let's do attendance and then people can stay with me or they can go. Okay, I see Amy. Amy is here. Um, Grace, Zamari, Jaden, Arshaya, Jude, Matthew, Kayla, Alexandra, um, Ava, Lauren, Amelia, Dylan, Jason, um, Grace, Dylan, Henry, Savannah, Janaza, Janasia, one day I'll say it right, one day, maybe, probably not, 
Um, Aaron, Raphael, Melvin, Christiana, Anya, Leah, Tariana, um, Alex, Caitlin, Soraya. Um, Ethan. Okay, great. So to answer your question, um, I got 480 by doing 840 and dividing it by 1.75. Yep, you're welcome. All right, Leah and Anya, do you want to see another one? Um, I think so. All right. Okay. Um, do you care which one? Do you want to do like another plain one and another coin one? I think I want a coin one, but I'm not like super like specific like I just want to do another one. Oh that's not what you wanted. Um a coin one. Okay. Let's find another coin one. Nope. Nope. I can make up a coin one. Okay, I'm just gonna make one up. How about that? All right, we're gonna make one up. So, wow, hold on, let me, give me a second to work my magic. Um, Okay, here we go, I got one. All right, someone collected a total of 44 coins, which were quarters and dimes. Total money collected is six dollars and twenty cents how many quarters and dimes did leah collect how about that okay here we go this is our problem Okay, so just like last time with our coins, we're gonna do an equation about the money and the equation about how many coins I have, okay? So right away, I know I have a total amount of, what was it, 44 coins? Oh, hold on, there we go. So where did my little box go? Come back. Mm -hmm. Hold on, my pen went away. There we go, there we go, now it's back. Okay, so we have total coins and we have total money and we have quarters and dimes again. So we're going to use, do you wanna do like Q's and D's or do you wanna do X's and Y's? I wanna do it the way that you, you're the most comfortable with. Either way work.
Q and D. Okay, sounds good. All right, so we have all of our quarter. I mean, see, I say one thing and I write the other because that no. Okay. Oh my gosh. You guys, it's a Monday. It is a Monday. All right, we gonna do this. Here we go. Quarters plus dimes gives me 44 coins. There we go. Um, and now I'm gonna go with all the money. So I know a quarter is worth 25 cents. So 25 cents per quarter. Dimes are 10 cents. So plus 10 cents per dime is gonna give me a total of $6.20. Okay, do you want me to do this one um, substitution or elimination? Because word problems you get to pick. Substitution. Substitution, okay. Do you want me to get the Q or the D by itself? D, all right. Oh, Anya was quicker. We're gonna get the D by itself. So to do that, I'm just gonna subtract Q. <laughs> it's okay. I don't care, you want me to do Q? Either, okay, whichever one we're getting on its own, you're just subtracting the other one over, okay? So if we get Q by itself, we're gonna subtract D. So we have Q is equal to 44 minus D, okay? So whenever I see the Q down here, this is what we're going to substitute it with, All right? So we're going to have 0.25. Here's my Q, so 44 minus D plus 0.10D equals $6.20. I'm going to distribute the 0.25, so by multiplying it by 44 to give me 11. And then I'm going to multiply it also to negative D to get negative 0.25D plus 0.10D equals 620. Um, bring my Ds together. So negative 0.25 plus 0.10. This becomes 11 minus 0.15D equals 620. I'm going to subtract 11. So 600, or not 600, $6.20 minus 11. is gonna give me negative 4.8. Okay. This is good, but there's lots of negatives involved. So it's, it's good to make sure you remember to just keep the sign with the right pieces. So even though 11 got moved, that negative in front of 0.15, it's still there. So make sure it stays there. Because now we have negative 4.8 divided by negative 0.15, and we're going to get 32. Okay. What's nice with word problems also is that you should always get positive answers, um, depending on what we're talking about. For most of these, like we can't have negative speed, right, for my, my planes and stuff. Here, we're talking about coins. I'm not going to have negative coins. But if you ever get a negative answer with these, you should be like, oh, wait, maybe something went wrong. All right, so we got 32 dimes. And to get my quarters, we plug it into somewhere. I'm gonna do the first one. No, it's not that Um, Let's see this. So Q plus D equals 44. So Q plus 32 equals 44. Subtract the 32 over. I'm gonna get Q equals 12. So I have 12 quarters and 32 dimes. And you can always plug it back in, guys. Always plug it back in. Oh, where's my mouse? There it is. Okay, I'm gonna show you. So like, what was it, 32? So 0.25, right, times my 12 quarters, plus the 10 cents for my 32 quarters. Can y'all see that? You can plug it in. And then look at that, I get the 6.2. So that's always a great way to check yourself. 
And then obviously make sure 12 and 32, when you add that together, you get 44. All right. All right, anything else? Any other kind of problem you need to see from me? No, just a coin problem? Okay. Anya, how about you? You good? Okay. Sounds good. We'll go do the rest and then do your pop quiz. You're welcome. You too.